I hope you're all doing well, by the way, and bloody hell I'm missing gigging. It's all right for you guys. You've only had 52 days of it. I've had, I haven't gigged, well, I did three gigs, because if you remember, I broke my hip back in December and missed loads and loads of gigs. So, uh, hey-ho, let's start off as we always do. This poem is shit. And you know it's shit. It's always shit. You can be shit-faced, have shit for brains, shit I get off the pot. You can smoke shit, talk shit, or even be shit hot. You can throw shit, give a shit, duck on it, it's the fan. You can be deep shit, tough shit when everything turns wrong. You can look like shit, feel shit, go like shit off a shovel. Find yourself up shit creek without any paddle. Have a shower of shit, get your shit together. Bear shit in the woods, cos it's always shitty weather. There's heavy shit, weird shit. Hey, please don't be offended. This is just a shitty poem. We're just fucking glad it's ended. Thank you. I thank you. These are, uh, because I've been locked away for uh, ages and ages and ages, uh, I've been writing, as writers do, I suppose. And they've been appearing up on my own Facebook feed and they've been appearing everywhere. This is, uh, I got really hacked off with people coming up with these crazy, crazy sort of conspiracy theories. This is about that. It's called Strange Days. Subtitled, even the conspiracy theory is a conspiracy. Strange days, unusual connections, strange voices, echoing reflections of card sharks and wheeler dealers, snake oil salesmen, crooked faith healers, YouTube prophets, conspiracy theorists, ridiculing science, ignoring the realists, so many experts, so many opinions, so many big brains, treating us like minions, patronising, talking down, so instead of wearing smiles we can only wear a frown, it ain't very good for our mental health. So please keep your opinions to your fucking self. Thank you. This is also, uh, it's sort of really, well, I suppose it pissed everybody off, uh, the government's treatment of our emergency workers. Uh, this is called You Don't, dot, 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 dot. You don't send a painter off to work without a brush. You don't send a driver a load without a truck. You don't send a soldier to war without a gun. Any mathematician can work it out using just a couple of sums. You don't find a banker without their stocks and shares. You don't find a vicar without a Bible and a prayer. You don't find a forest without a falling tree. You can't find a crisis without a cup of tea. You don't find the telegraph criticising any Tories. You can't find a boxer that can out knock out Tyson Fury. But you do expect a health food trust to look after all its workers and wish that our government were not penny-pinching shirkers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this I wrote after the Manchester bombings, actually, and did it a couple of times down the cellars, supporting Jesse. Uh, and it sort of is even more appertainable now. It's called Heroes. Where the hell is Batman when you need him most? Did Captain America's invite go missing in the post? Why won't Scotty beam me up? Where's Flash and Superman? I thought I could rely on them to protect their fellow man. Where are all our superheroes to help us fight these crimes? Where are all the superheroes to help us through our times? But some days, every now and then, in the midst of all the horror... A superhero steps forward, a paramedic, fireman or doctor, a member of the public, someone who won't pass by, someone who gives a shit, someone who'll have a try, someone who does what they have to do, they don't need no Superman mask, they just do what they have to do without having to be asked. So we have our superheroes, we see them every day, they don't need no colourful costumes, just the decent living wage. Thank you. Hello, Niels. You all right there? Watch out for a great single coming out from uh, those young lads there. Young lads, hey? <laughs> uh, Northern Riots. Great single coming up. Trust me. This is called Virus, because uh, what else can we do but sort of uh, 
stay at home. I've been here for 55 days now. I locked myself away at the beginning. It's quite interesting. I haven't noticed. I haven't missed anything apart from the gigs. Well, apart from the beer, actually. And at the gigs. But this is called Virus. I'm staying at home today. I'm staying at home tomorrow. I'm staying at home for the next four months. I'm leaving the world in great sorrow. I suppose I could repaint the kitchen. I could write a new masterpiece. But it'd be four months of beer, Netflix and pizza. And I'll end up looking obsese. Ob obese. Perhaps I should buy myself jigsaws. I teach myself crochet or knitting. I go out and sort out the garden. Not look out, just look out the window, just wishing. Perhaps I'll become alcoholic. But I never stocked up on the booze. And I can't go and scare myself shitless. Because there's no bog paper left in me loo. So I'll just sit here and scratch me own bollocks. And watch the grim news on TV. And try to stay safe and open the virus. Don't come anywhere near me. And pity the poor sods who go out. And face this thing right face to face. The government's treatment of workers. Seems to me just a fucking disgrace. There's not enough gear for our nurses. No visors, no masks and no gowns. No protection for them in care homes. One sneeze and we'll all fall down. Some countries have handled it badly. Some countries have handled it worse. But our lot just dithered and dithered. And hoped that the thing would disperse. So one day when this thing blows over. For, for them that is gone raise a drink. Look to Whitehall for some sort of reckoning. And ask why their attitudes stink. Thank you. Uh, again, on the same vein of being locked away, because there's bugger all else to write about, really. This is called Jogging Pants. They've been the longest three weeks in the history of ever, stuck inside our houses, irrespective of the weather. Just bit players in this game of life, sitting out the locking, avoiding all the strife, panning for gold in the YouTube channels, scraping stuff to watch from the bottom of a battle, it's become our entertainment, that's how we spend our nights. No one's had an air cut, we all look like a fright. All we've worn in jogging pants for the last three months and turned our communications into a set of grunts. Thank God for the internet, FaceTime, Zoom and others. Keeping the connection between sisters, brothers, mothers. Not going out to shop, having everything delivered. All this home drinking is fucking with me liver. Watching wildlife take over the street. Going for a walk, it's just the badgers that you meet. We're all hand washing, but it's the world that's getting clean. All on the count of that COVID-19. Thank you. Uh, this is the last one about the uh, virus and COVID thing. And it's dedicated to us all, because when this is over, boy, how are you going to hit that pub? It's called When This Shit Is Over. When all this shit is over, we'll sit down inside a bar. We'll strap ourselves into our seats and drink away the scars, the bruises and the broken bones that life has dealt our way, and toast all of our enemies come that wondrous drunken day. We'll throw the glasses to the floor and curse our so-called friends. We don't forgive, we don't forget, we'll never make amends. When all this shit is over, we'll sit there face to face. We'll stumble round and mumble about each other's saving grace. We'll show the world we matter. We'll show the world we care. We'll drink that bloody bar so dry to drink away our tears. We'll drink till night time's over. We'll drink till break of day. We'll down the hatch and raise the roof till they carry us away. Thank you. Opium. Right, on a lighter note, let's get a bit lighter now. This is called Phobias. And you've got to be sober to say this one. Which will be unique for me. I'm scared of beautiful women. And Venus trophobic. I don't like spiders either. 
I'm also arachnophobic. I don't like the colour purple. I'm polyphorophobic. And I'm not too fond of water. I guess I'm hydrophobic. I don't really like wriggly snakes. I'm ophidophobic. And I don't like things that are dead. I'm necrobloodyphobic. I always wear zips. I don't like buttons. I'm compophobic. And I don't like the kicking of clicking of the clock. I'm chromometrophobic. I don't like things that are big. I'm megalocophobic. I don't like things things that are small, I must be microphobic. I think I'm scared of my phobia, that means I'm phobophobic. And I'm really scared of giants. I guess I'm fifi phobic Thank you. <coughs> it's really bizarre with nobody giggling. Well, not even the cats laughing. Huh. This is another new one. This is about vampires. I fell in love with a vampirina. It was love at first bite. She couldn't have been more obscene. We slept all day and made love all night. And when she went to McDonald's, she gave everyone a fright. She ordered her Big Mac, uncooked and raw, and was offended they don't do bloody milkshakes anymore. She hangs upside down when she goes to sleep. I tried doing that, but I fell down in an heap. She loves red meat, but avoids having steaks. Can't do her makeup in a mirror, cause she makes mistakes. She always drinks a soup before it's clotted, and drinks Bloody Mary. Cos Mary's veins are carotid Every party we go to Someone tries to lay her So she eats all the food She's my hungry vampire The Buffy Slayer Yeah, alright <laughs> I thought it was funny at the time uh, <coughs> You probably don't know You might know, I don't know But I'm also an artist And I'm greatly influenced by this guy uh, This is dedicated to one of my influence, Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh was a painter. He painted the landscapes in France. But a little fact, known fact about Vincent was he really enjoyed a good dance. He'd dance in the local French cafes. He'd dance through the night until morn. Then he'd go on by bus, pick up a brush and knock off a landscape by dawn. One day, while pissed on his absinthe, he tried painting whilst dancing a conga. But whilst dancing a jig, the art got too big, because absinthe make the art grow longer. But then he developed an earache, caused by the loud disco beat. Though the act co cost him dear, he cut off his ear, and it frightened the dogs in the street. He carefully wrapped it in paper. To his mistress, he sent it by post. She wasn't impressed and ripped up his vest. Signed, their engagement was toast. Now Vincent was deaf and heartbroken. His dancing days now sadly finished. He hadn't an ear for the music, though his painting was never diminished. Thank you. This is called pills. I've been had a broken hip and doing all this shit that I've done. Ah, uh, I've had a lot of pills lately. This is a poem about them. There's lots of little pills today to take your aches and pains away. The white ones make us better, yellow for go-getters, green ones to stop the blow-up, too many and you throw up. Blue ones make it harder and help that loving harder. Pink ones help at sleepers night, green ones make us feel like shite. A purple one can make us smart, a black one just explodes the art. A brown one helps you if you mourn, three too many and you grow horns. One pill makes you smaller, one pill makes you tall. But the ones that mother gives you stops you climbing up the wall. There's pills to help your diet, pills to make you fat. Pills to stop the ageing, pills that make you chat. Pills to make you happy. Pills to make you sad, pills that turn you inside out till you think you're going mad. Pills like, that act like magic, you'll swear that you've been exed. I got some Viagra to stop the brugger's droop and offered my old lady a night of super sex. I was so pissed off when she chose the soup. Thank you. This is dedicated to an hero of mine. <laughs> it's... Uh, doesn't have a title it just starts like this like a pubic hair on a toilet seat you really piss me off like a doctor in a hernia ward you make me want to cough like a chameleon on a tartan rug you never show true colours 
like a wristwatch on a businessman you've got no time for others like a violinist in a folk group you're always on the fiddle like a double-ended yo-yo you play both ends against the middle like the eyes of the executioner peering from his mask like a piece of spat out chewing gum you stick into your task like a one-legged man in an arse kicking race you're next to fucking useless like sherlock holmes in a cluedo game you're absolutely clueless like two lovers on a moonless night you're groping in the dark like frankenstein's monster on the slab you're missing a vital spark like a dyslexic agnostic that doesn't believe in dog you're stuck in the wrong century because you're jacob william rees mogg thank you i thank you this is uh this is another new one tons of new ones i'm just checking the time uh this is called sayings because i love sayings and i love playing with them you can lead a horse to water, but a pencil has to be led. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it, is a phrase that's seldom said. Is not the smartest egg in the attic, is what everybody thinks. And you can put your mon rubbish in another man's bin, but you can never make him drink. I'll stand me ground and state me claim, because hell hath no fury. And I'll say what I want to say till all the cows freeze over. And I'm never counting on me chickens, because that's not rocket science. I've made me bed and I've watched it boil, just like any other kitchen appliance. Me sleeping dog has woken up and bitten me lazy hen. And one man's meat is another man's fish, unless he counts to ten. There's something afoot out there, and it's not just a twelve-inch ruler. And oranges aren't the only fruit, because cucumbers are cooler. Never wash yourself in public, if your underpants are dirty. You can lead an horse to water, but it'll never win the 230. Thank you. <coughs> Here's one about getting old. Because I am. Ah, bloody old. <coughs> this is called Time Goes By So Fast. Sometimes it's better not to remember. Sometimes it's better to forget. Sometimes it's better just to turn the page and wipe away the debt. Nostalgia ain't what it used to be. Don't look back in sorrow when all is finally said and done. Today will be yesterday tomorrow. Time is what you make it. It's never on your side. Between the living and the dead is where two worlds collide. So always live to tomorrow. Don't dwell in the past. Because when you're getting older, time goes by so fast. And one day... You'll be called Spider-Man because you can't get yourself out of the bath. Thank you. This is for all the rock and rollers out there. This is for Nils. This is for the lot of you. It's called the Devil's Rock and Roll. If you lose your woman and you lose your soul, it don't mean a damn, it's just the devil's rock and roll. If you win a lottery ticket, gets washed in your old jeans and the bosses lay you off because they've brought in a machine. And everything you touch seems to turn to shite. Your days are numbered and you don't sleep well at night. Turn to the bottle to have a little tipple when you realise your partner has got that extra nipple. And your credit card's been nicked and your pocket's just been picked and your cat's got oobs and it's worked out all your moves. There's a goat inside your wardrobe and a succubus wears your bathrobe there's horns on the end of the pizza delivery man and you realize that black sabbath isn't just a band and you went to the crossroads but you still can't play guitar and although the tune's been lifted you'll always bear the scar and god proclaimed to richards to us he would be creased. jesus gave us cliff but the devil gave us keith and there ain't a cobbler that can fix a hole that's in your soul relax sit back and suck it up. It's just the devil's rock and roll. Thank you. How are we doing? A couple more minutes left. Uh, this is about music as well. This is called Punk Rocker. Because I was. Well, before that was a nippy. Before that was a mod. Bloody hell. <laughs> uh, punk Rocker. I saw the police. I went to see The Clash. Bought all of their albums and spent all of me cash. I saw the Rizillos and Sham 69. Going to punk gigs took up all me time. I saw the Pogues when they were Pug Malone. 
but I never got to see a band they called the Ramones. I saw Peter and the Test Tube Babies, even had a pint with old rat scabies. I saw Chelsea and Alternative TV, all that speed nearly was the death of me. I saw Ian Dury, I went there on my own, but I never got to see a band they called the Ramones. I saw the damned and x-ray specs, I always wear the slits in great respect. I saw the pistols and the ruts as well, the voidoys fronted by Richard Hell. I saw the tubes and lots of un unknowns, but I never ever got to see a band called the Ramones. Thank you. Sad is that, isn't it? This is called Zoltar, because down on the seafront down here we have a man in a box that tells your future. And if you're going past him and you're a bit stoned or pissed, he talks to you in a very fu funny voice. I am Zoltar, and he scares the living shite out of you. This is a poem for him. Zoltar tells a future, he lives inside a box. You only see him from waist up, that's why he wears no socks. Zoltar tells your future. For only 50p, but can you trust your forecast from someone with no knees? Zoltair tells the future, whether good or whether bad, his wooden voice intones your fate, that's why you look so sad. Zoltair tells your future, and Zoltair never smiles, he sits outside inside his box, that's why he suffers piles. Zoltair's eyes are mechanical, Zoltair knows your fate, Zoltair knows if you've got time, but he knows that it's too late. Zoltar knows your future from deep inside his box and all the time he's planning on how to steal your socks and sometime in the night time when the amusements all close down Zoltar puts his legs back on and walks around the town so beware the darkened alleys beware deserted docks in case Zoltar tries to grab you knock you down and steal your socks <laughs> three more and then it's then it's time and it's time to go home, I suppose. Well, I am home. I don't know. What am I talking about? I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is one. This is one for all of us. This is one just really, you know, because we always get pissed off at people complaining and whinging and whining and picking fault with us. I don't. It hasn't even got a title. <clears throat> time to put two fingers up to the ones who put us down. Time to put two fingers up to the ones who make us frown. The Twitter trolls and online bullies. People who think Mrs Brown is funny. Ex-wives that stalk you on social media. People who fake entries on Wikipedia. People who bump into you when they're on the phone. People who just won't leave things alone. People who talk too loud on trains. People who act like they're bloody insane. People whose dogs shit in the street. People who think it's cool to cheat. People who are flash and show off their wealth. People who moan about the state of their health. All the shit that's written in the Daily Fail. Unsolicited stuff that's in the mail. People who don't mean what they say. Loan sharks that lend until payday. Don't let the shit get under your skin. You're better than that. Now it's your turn to win. So don't let the mess inside your head. Just keep on walking. Look straight ahead. Dodge their bullet and keep good grace. Wear that smile right across your face. Don't feel bad if they try to scoff. Just raise two fingers and say fuck off. Thank you. Ah, this is called Litter. Because, uh, well, we used to have visitors in Scarborough. Do you remember those days? We had visitors. Uh, and they used to leave shit all over the beach. So this is about coal litter. Fantastic plastic used to be bee's knees. Now the plastic's turned drastic. It's clogging up the seas. Killing all the sea life being eaten by the fish. Entering our food chain with every seafood dish. There's plastic in the halibut, in our fish and chips. Adorning all our coffee cups. Don't use those plastic lids. Don't use that plastic stirring spoon. Refuse that plastic straw. And as for plastic knives and forks, don't use them anymore. Don't leave your plastic on the beach. Don't drop it on the ground take your litter home with you stop chucking it around have some respect for where you are before our anger hardens or else we'll all come through to Leeds and shit in your front garden thank you
and I will finish with this one. Thank you ever so much for tuning in. Thank you, Sound of Scarborough. Uh, it's a great thing that you're doing. I think it's rather wonderful. Uh, this is called happiness, as in happiness, as in happiness with an H. Because if you do it without the H, it comes out as a penis, and that's a different poem entirely. Oh, just a quick plug. Sometime next week, a second book of poetry will be coming out of... Uh, it will be uh, called Collected Poems, Volume 2, 2016 to 2020. Watch out for it on Amazon, and I will splash it all over social media. And there's a new Agnes coming out soon as well, Agnes number 9. Hey-ho! you got to do something when you're sat at home, playing with your cat. Happiness. Happiness comes with a whisper bar or a nickel block of glory in the harbour bar. An unexpected orgasm or a tax rebate. Paying off your debts, wiping clean the slate. Happiness comes with a new CD, discovering you haven't got an STD. Finding a tenor in an old jacket pocket, lighting up a joint that took off like a rocket. Happiness comes with a living wage, food in your stomach and a pension all the age. A society that cares for its ill and sick and not being sold to money grabbing pricks that starve it to cash to make sure sure it fails. Say it loud, say it proud. National health is not for sale. Thank you, that's me. Thank you for watching and take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Keep safe. Bye now.